If you know me, then you know that one of my favorite things ever is the Dragon Con Bunny Hunch Party. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the Bunny Hunch Party is kind of like the kickoff for Dragon Con. It's on Thursday night. And it's a, it's a party, but there's a costume contest attached to it. Um, and the purpose of the event and the goal for the contest is to come up with a Playboy style hef smoking jacket and or a bunny suit. And you can take an existing fandom. Uh, you can do an original creation. You can do all sorts of things. Like there's a lot of room for creativity. Um, and if you've been following me, you know that uh, the first year that I entered was 2018. It is the only year that I have not won at least a category. And I get a lot of people who are like, oh my gosh, you're so creative. Your stuff is so good. And of course, I appreciate the compliments. And I would never be upset about a compliment. Because we all know I love attention. But I thought it would be neat to show you what goes on when I plan for whatever that year's bunny is. Or even for a commission. Because I do take commissions. Um, so the, in this video, I'm going to kind of walk through my brainstorming process. This has technically already been done. I was on the phone with my friend uh, for a good chunk of time yesterday, figuring out how I was going to make this project. And it is Wonder Woman. Um, she commissioned two sets from me, one Wonder Woman and one Loki. Uh, I'm borrowing my friend's sewing machine and I don't want to put that vinyl through her machine because I don't know how it'll react. So we're going to use the Wonder Woman set as an example. And I'm just going to walk you through my thought process. Um, first off, obviously you have to buy the materials. Obviously. Um, if you can making your own pattern would be super swell. If not, I do have my pattern available for sale. <clears throat> Sorry, this is going to happen a lot. I don't know why I'm just, ugh, today. Um, but this will give you an idea if you want to make your own pattern. Uh, you make a very ear-like pattern. I'm notorious for making my ears super large and heavy. Uh, but I'm going to be switching over to this pattern for future because my ears always fall down because they're super heavy. Um, but as you can see, this is a pretty basic shape. <clears throat> uh, not hard. Uh, the easiest trick to do, obviously, is I start out with paper to make my pattern. I fold the, pa fold the paper in half <clears throat> and draw this general shape. And then obviously when you unfold it, you'll have a symmetrical uh, pattern. This doesn't look symmetrical because of how the washi tape sat on it, but this is actually symmetrical. I put the washi tape on it because it is a clear pattern and I got tired of losing it. The cuff is a much easier, much easier pattern. You just need to make a rectangle and it's usually easiest if you make it a pattern that you put on a fold. So when I use this pattern, the fabric that I cut is actually twice as wide. So uh, I'm going to use my friend's Wonder Woman set as an example. And you got to start out with a reference image that you're happy with. Like, I, that probably sounds, like, obvious. But you would be amazed how many people I see go into Bunny Hutch and they don't have a reference image with them. And I assume if they don't you have a reference image with them that they might not have used one at all. I'm going to reach up for my ruler here. Don't judge me for the non-matching pajamas. So for Wonder Woman, obviously, the, the classic color scheme is red, white, and blue. With a little bit of yellow or gold. But we'll get to that later. Um, so here I decided on a really actually pretty... I went for a more classic color scheme. More so than the current like Gal Gadot color scheme. And... I'm really happy with this. 
if you are a fan of Wonder Woman, you know a couple of basic things about her. You know that her little bloomers have are blue with white stars on them and you may or may not remember that she has that lasso they're like a magical lasso so i'm gonna show you how those things translate to this i'm actually gonna press this and make it flat and we're gonna use this and i'm gonna make an ear so that i have one of each to show you exactly what happens when I start the creative process, if you will. Um, before I really get into the details though, I do want to throw out a couple of suggestions of things that have made my making a whole lot easier. Uh, and that is a small wool pressing mat, ironing mat. I'm not entirely sure of what term that I used for it. I have that and I actually hate ironing because especially for like this set I don't want to take out I don't want to lug out the full ironing board and the full iron but if you go on Amazon you can get and I love this thing it's a small iron you can put water in it all right here there's water um you can choose whether you have steam or not and it's super just for size reference like See how this is, would be super useful for something small like ears or sewing on interfacing or, or, well, there is sewing on interfacing. I personally would like fusible just because I feel like it gives it a little bit more stability. And considering that interfacing is also called stabilizer, I feel that you want something that's really, really going to keep a good hold on that fabric. So if you also were frustrated with ironing, Honestly, this is so great. I can set this up anywhere. Uh, my room at home is like the only place where I have stuff. So having a small setup like this to make small things and even really uh, the current project I'm working on, these little irons are a lifesaver. When you get ready to actually sew the pieces of the cuff and the ears together keep in mind that you will need a seam allowance which is exactly what it sounds like it's how much is going to be on the side of where you sew the seam uh so my problem is i always manage my to make my ears too bad too big because i always think that it's going to get taken care of with the seam allowance but i only use like a 5 8 inch seam allowance which if you don't know what that means it's on the machine it will actually tell you it'll have a range of measurements it'll have half inch five eighths, six eighths, et cetera. And you'll be able to track it uh, when you push the fabric through. So <clears throat> I have my two sides here. And remember when you're doing something, something like this, right side goes to right side. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stitch this puppy up. And when it's sewn and we're ready for the more creative part of the process, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll come back. I do want to show you while I have this sewn, just a tip uh, when you're making the ears, especially if you haven't sewn anything like this. Um, so as you can see, I have the two sides, like I said, uh, right side to right side. And when you go to flip this thing inside out, so you can do like the top stitching and stuff like that, you want to slash your seam allowance. You don't want to go past the you don't want to go past the seam. But you want to do that. You want to do it all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and This is not very close. I'm having a rough day with 
getting these close enough because you are going to trim the excess after you do this. Um, which might make it seem futile to have a seam allowance, but the seam allowance is there to help you sew so that you have enough fabric under the foot that you won't lose your piece. Here, I'm gonna come up here. Uh, and then whenever I sew anything with a point, I'm not 100% sure if this is actually what you're supposed to do, but this is what I do. So see how it comes to a point right here? I just cut this off. Not again, you don't wanna go past the seam allowance, but I just hack off as close to that as I can without, because then you're not shoving that extra fabric inside when you turn everything inside out. I'll come here. If you don't have a pair of scissors like this, by the way, I do recommend getting them because they're super useful for something like this. Um, if you, especially if you have like carpal tunnel or similar situations where it's hard to force open a heavy pair of scissors like that. This way you're just pushing it. You're not prying it open. And it opens back up by itself. So you don't have to pull it back open after you cut. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is going to be tricky. I normally use a chopstick for this next part, but I'm at a friend's house using her machine, so I don't have access to that, uh, that chopstick. Okay, I'm going to cut the corners here. Cut the corner. Okay. And then quite simply, you flip it inside out. This is what I was doing when the video was, uh, well, towards the beginning of the video. You turn it inside out. You can kind of see where this is going. I feel like I'm making a hand puppet. <laughs> So you can kind of see where it's turning in the shape of an ear. Uh, I am kind of sad that I'm going to be making more subdued ears. <laughs> but it's, so it's hard when I make the huge ears because like I still have to travel with those. Those have to go usually in a separate box. Um, there's usually two or three of us in the car and we almost all of us have at least one big piece. This year's going to be a disaster because I'm going to have Circus Baby, which is an entire big costume. So I'm just going to be sitting there with her on my lap. Um, plus my ears for this year. I'm going to be a mess. Um, but see, you know, I have a chopstick and this is easier. But what you want to do is you want to push that corner up as much as you can to get that nice point. This is, oh, paintbrush. Let's try a paintbrush. Oh, much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sound like that bird. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what is this doing? Okay. This is a pretty good little point here for having to use a paintbrush. See? Pretty good point. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make these sides as flat as possible. So you're going to do, take that, that chopstick or that paintbrush and you're going to, I don't know if you can see where I'm pulling it taut against the seam and get like a couple inches, like really flat. I knew I was going to drop that. Take it over here to your, to your little iron and press it. And you can see the difference of where I flat ironed it, not flat ironed, where I ironed it and where, this is what it would look like if I didn't do that. So it's not a huge difference, but it is gonna sit flatter and it's just gonna look cleaner. Like, and ultimately, uh, if you're doing the bunny hunch for fun, don't worry about it, have fun. 
But if you are entering the contest, something like this is a simple thing that you can do that doesn't cost any money that's going to add just that little bit of oomph and that little bit of cleanliness to your outfit. Just a quick, so this is what it looks like when you turn it inside out before you press it. And this is what it looks like when you press it. Um, I personally recommend pressing it on both sides just to really get that nice flat look. So I'm gonna do the other side and then we're gonna actually start talking about what this video is for. And that is brainstorming how you're gonna do your sets. So now that you have your two flattened pieces, you want to very, very carefully, very carefully, um, before you do this, take scraps of the fabrics and test and make sure that you have the right, uh, the right tension and everything on your machine so that you don't like royally mess up your actual pieces. I always cut a couple of scraps just to make sure, um, see how it's going to react with the interfacing because interfacing can do some weird, weird stuff. Um, as I really learned with Circus Baby, I mean, I already kind of knew that, but that project has been, whew, I worked with a super stiff interfacing, like super, super stiff. And uh, it was after four layers of the interfacing, it would still go through the machine. But if I added absolutely anything else, like I tried to add some bias tape to hide some ugliness on that, and it would not. My machine was like maxed out. Um, so I'm using basic cotton and I've used my friend's machine before, so I kind of know it's quirks. It doesn't really have any, it's actually a great little machine. I know my phone is trying to adjust. My phone is, doesn't know what to focus on. This is really looking nice. This is looking so sharp. I've made so many pairs of ears and cuffs, but still like every time I make something and it comes out looking real sharp and clean. It makes me happy. It makes me so happy. Um, I'm not a great sewer. There's kind of a, I call it a disconnect between my brain and my hands and between my hands and the machine. So like, I know what I should do to make something look well. And I know like, oh, this is the, you know, the way you're going to do it. But sometimes gravity and physics get in the way. I especially if you have a lot of fabric going through. Um, so like this ear, I have to walk through the point because the point has a lot of fabric underneath it. And I learned from learning from working on baby. Sometimes you have to, the machine really does not want to do this. It really does not want to do this. Um, and sometimes just walking it carefully and doing it slowly is going to just put a little bit less pressure on the needle when you're sewing it. So s uh, materials that might bend or break your needle if you just push it through might be fine if you just do, um, her machine doesn't have it, but my machine has a button that will, if you hit it once, it sends the needle down, you hit it again, it sends it up. So you're kind of walking it through, but you're not like wrenching your hand on the wheel on the side. Um, that's actually one of the things that I love about my machine versus, there we go. And the reason why I'm doing this before we talk about the creative process is I want you to, like I can picture what ears and cuffs look like in my head because I've made so many. Um, if you're new to this, you might not really know what to expect from what you're working with. So this way I can kind of give you, like, this is the shape that you should be thinking of in your mind sort of thing. So, um, yeah, this didn't do great. Uh, whenever you do the ear and the cuffs, you have to decide what side is showing because you want that to be on the top because that stitching is gonna be a lot neater than the bottom. So a great example of this is the blue. I decided the blue is gonna show. Um, 
the blue stitching is going to show. And if you look at the back, it's kind of, oh, no, it's kind of a little janky. It's not, it's not the best. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I know, like, I should probably up the tension on this. Maybe. I don't know. But this seam is going to be hidden. So I'm not really worried about it at all. Um, and we're going to do the cuff. Whenever I do the cuff, I start sewing the end that was open that I had to fold under. Um, this is the side that you leave open so that you can actually flip the thing inside out. So we're going to do this. And honestly, this is probably going to give me some, some hell. Um, because again, it's one of those things where you, when you have a lot of material in one place, sometimes the needle doesn't feel like participating that way. So I'm going to do this real fast. And you, you run into that problem a lot with corners, a lot with corners. Um, no Sleep Till Cosplay has a great tutorial on how to sew corners. Um, I obviously haven't looked at it in a while because I obviously haven't looked at it in a while. <laughs> but honestly, like for cut for ears and cuffs, um, I'm not super. This is not gonna move. No, nope, it's moving. Okay. My thread just broke. Okay, that's fine. This is fine. This is actually super annoying. I hate when it. Okay, so we're gonna cut all this. I should be able to disguise this. Um, I'm not a pro, so I when I charge for commission I don't charge like pro amounts Jesus Christ and this it's dark thread so I'm especially having trouble threading yes I know the machine comes with a threader I can literally never get it to work ever on any machine so we just do this by hand ah there we go all right, now we have a general idea of what shapes we're working with. Uh, the machine, I like how I was like, oh, you know, I've used this machine before. I'm used to its, you know, quirks as it proceeds to do the same thing that it's never done for me ever, like four times. If you look on the inside of this, I'm like, oh. This is why, this is why you pick what side the stitching is going to show on. Because you're going to try to hide that as best as you can. Let me trim up extra thread. Um, but just to show you, so the cuff is going to do this. I don't like making buttonholes for cuffs because I don't like making buttonholes. So I actually try to make a cuff that can slide off and on. That's how I make my own cuffs. Oh, they're also, I made my current, my ones for next year a little bit big, but there's ways to fix that. So you see here, I can... Okay, so what buttons do I use? Like, how do I decide what buttons to use? Well, I got to keep the character in mind. I have to consider the character. And while Wonder Woman is the son, is the daughter of a god, I don't feel like she would be very flashy about it. Like, I think her priorities are on doing good. I don't think she's thinking about like, oh, you know, I got to look hot while I was doing it. So I went to Joanne's and I found these very, very simple. You can tell they have almost like a sea glass look very simple buttons that don't match 100 percent. like you'll be able to see that there's buttons there but they're not going to be super flashy she just doesn't seem like that kind of person to me um and then of course we all know her infamous bloomers or whatever brief whatever you want to call it is the royal blue with white stars so i found these little iron on white stars I wish they had more than three packs, but we got three packs. So, and these are iron-on. Um, so I'm going to try ironing them on. I don't know how much I trust them iron-on. I'm always skeptical of iron-on stuff. Um, oh, this is very cute. Very cute. So just to show you, that's what the contrast will look like. Um, so I got those done. And then of course I was telling you about her lasso, her magic lasso. 
So I actually got, I wish they had more of it, but they didn't. Oh, well. So I actually got this great rope-like trim. Now this is on the ears what's going to hide this ugly, ugly, ugly stitching. Let me see if I can actually get this to cooperate. So it's going to hide that. And it's just going to be a nice little throwback. Um, it'll cover the ugly. It's great. So my personal thing is you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, have to keep the character's character in mind. So something that I'll use the examples that I've done. Um, I've done Ash from Overwatch. I've done Harley Quinn, but Birds of Prey Harley. I've done May from Overwatch, and I did last year Jack from Mass Effect 3. These are four very different characters, although Harley and Jack probably have some similarities there, but that's for another discussion. And I like custom making corsets for those characters. So Ash, I didn't really go super character appropriate. I still was adjusting to making corsets and everything like that and making them for the characters. So that bunny suit was very, very low cut. But then the next year I did Harley from Birds of Prey and I decided that I wanted the top of the corset to look like her golden overalls, which she wears open and they kind of slouch open so you can see the pink on the inside. So I did that with her bunny suit and I put a giant fake diamond button on where the uh, split ended and I did that on the cuffs and then I did the classic reverse so like one side was the pink side of the ear and then one side was the diamond side of the ear and I did the same thing with the cuffs obviously so most characters you're not going to want to put all of the details on the same side so I don't want to put the stars and the rope on the blue side and then leave nothing on the red side like that's kind of boring um, but if you mix it up, first of all, decide which side of the ears is showing forward. Okay. Um, I don't know what my friend wants to do. I personally think that her, the blue side of the cuff should show. Um, which this is why picking a fun lighting is fun. Because even though that side is closed, I'm so not left-handed. You can still get a little pop of color. Like you can tell, even when this is closed... You can tell that there's red there. It's not a lot. It's very subtle. But that's a small thing that you can do to really just, again, add another detail. Um, especially if you're going in for the contest. You will stand relatively close to the judges. They will be able to see the inside of your cups. Especially if you have a fun inside or a contrast inside. Trust me, it's worth the extra time. All right, so we're going to do the cuffs first. And obviously there have been so many versions of Wonder Woman that you can actually kind of go off script with this one. It doesn't have to be accurate to a particular Wonder Woman. Now, I feel like one of each four packs of stars should go on the blue part of the ears, which leaves us with two stars per cuff. And in some versions of Wonder Woman... She has not only the star on her tiara, but sometimes she has it on her bracelet too. So what I want to do is I want to put one star. Where did I put it? Where did I put the one that I pulled off? So I want to put oof, one star. This is, why do I do this with my wrong hand? So I want to put one star right there and on the inside so like this if i can get it to so it's gonna look like that and then she'll have one on the other side see it's not a lot but it's a small detail 
that just adds a little bit of extra oomph to specifically the cuffs. This video is getting really long, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly wrap it up. I ironed both stars on, so you can see what I mean. I haven't decided which side of the cuff I'm going to put some of this rope trim on, but I am going to put some on, I think, the bottom. I feel like the bottom works better, so it's closer to her hand, since her hand needs the lasso. Um, don't worry if your stuff isn't perfect. My stuff is never perfect. You should see the inside of my stuff. My stuff is janky on the inside. It just has to look good on the outside, and it just has to make you happy. Okay? So do that. And then I'll have a blue button right here. Super simple blue button. And then the rope. And then with the ear, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put on... Well, I, well in this case, I'm going to put four stars on this. Probably one here, one here, and then two on each side right here. And then this will also get the rope trim on top. So... Now that you've seen a little bit of how my brain works when I do these, um, again, I do have these ear and cuff patterns for sale. I can put the link, actually I am gonna put the link to the, uh, the post where I talk about selling these in the description. Mm, I'll put it somewhere, down there, <laughs> down there somewhere, if you wanna buy, and it will come with, uh, each stencil, uh, it'll come with instructions, and I think I'm going to make a video. Yes, I'm going to add a QR code. I'm going to make a video from start to finish of making this stuff, and then I'll include a QR code on the instructions that come with your pattern if you decide to go that way. Uh, hopefully this helped you a little bit. You're always welcome to message me with questions on any of the profiles that I'm on Facebook. Twitter, whatever. Message me if you have questions and I'll try to help you out.